My name is Jeff. Welcome to the Barbecue Book Club. For this Try Tuesday, we are working on ribs. We have a nice pack of spare ribs, St. Louis style from Costco. The good part about that and today is that it comes in a three pack. So there's three racks of ribs in here. I'm gonna try it three different ways. The traditional three, two, one method, but one of the wraps, I'm gonna use the regular foil. The second one, I'm gonna use butcher paper. And the third one, I'm just gonna let it sit on smoke six hours, um, no wrap at all. So we'll see how that goes. We're gonna put a regular traditional rub and we'll make a regular traditional barbecue sauce. So the only thing we're gonna change about the three, two, one ribs, which is three hours on smoke, two hours wrapped, then one hour on smoke again with the sauce. The only thing we're gonna change is what kind of wrap or no wrap at all. And we'll see how it goes. The rub for the ribs today is coming out of Myron Mixon's book, Smokin' with Myron Mixon. It is absolutely the basic barbecue rub. Nothing wrong with it. The only thing different from a rub that I would make myself is that there's sugar in it. And for the longer cooks, I don't like putting sugar on the meat so early because it can burn over time. But these are just ribs and they'll be wrapped for about half the time. Uh, so we're gonna go and fix up this, uh, this rub. Today's barbecue rub coming from Smokin' with Myron Mixon. And as stated, is the basic barbecue rub. So it's pretty simple. There's, of course, your brown sugar, pepper, kosher salt, a little cayenne, onion powder, garlic powder, chili powder, uh, dry mustard, I'll grind that up, and that's it. It's super simple. I'm just going to whisk all of this beautiful stuff together. It is a cup of brown sugar, two tablespoons chili powder, two tablespoons mustard, two tablespoons onion powder, two tablespoons garlic powder, two tablespoons cayenne powder, two tablespoons kosher salt, and two tablespoons of black pepper. Look at that. That is a beautiful rub right there. And it is gorgeous. And this makes uh, makes about three cups that the book says. So that is perfect because over here, three racks of ribs. So that'll be perfect. Loaded up on the smoker, set for 250. They're going on all together. Three hours on smoke, and then we'll wrap after that. About one hour into this smoke, so I'm just gonna give it a little spritz. I'm actually gonna move them around a little bit because the hot spot for this smoker is back here. So if I keep the same one back there, it's gonna get all crusty before the other ones do. So I'm gonna just give a little spritz. This is apple juice, apple cider vinegar, and a little water. A little spritz, and I'm gonna move them around, shift them around, and uh, we'll check back in another hour. Making the barbecue sauce out of the meat head. Meathead Goldwyn Cookbook, The Science of Great Barbecue and Grilling. This is going to take a cup of vinegar, a quarter cup of ketchup, a quarter cup of apple juice, which I had to buy. I did not have this in my house. Uh, of course, it's got some brown sugar, three tablespoons of brown sugar, a tablespoon kosher salt, a teaspoon of hot sauce, we're team Tapatio over here. A teaspoon, crushed red pepper flakes. So this thing's gonna be a little, little spicy. It's gonna have a kick to it. And a teaspoon of freshly ground pepper. So that's what we're gonna whip together, whisk it together. And it says to refrigerate uh, three hours. So the flavors can melt together. Overnight is better, but I don't have time for that today. So anyway, we're gonna put this all together, three hours.
The sauce for the ribs today is going to come out of the Science of Great Barbecue and Grilling by Meathead Goldwyn. And for this sauce, it's not going to be a regular, thick, traditional sauce. What I'm using is in here. It's called the Lexington, uh, what the heck is that? The West Carolina Barbecue Sauce. And basically what that is, it's a modified mop sauce with a little bit of tomato in there and some uh, sugar. So when the um, when it goes on, it won't be thick. It's, it's a pretty, I've already made it, and it's a pretty thin sauce. But it's interesting. I'm, I'm curious to see how it goes. Since the rub I used on the ribs already has sugar in it, I'm not too worried <clears throat> excuse me, about it getting uh, stuck onto the ribs and sticky and tacky and, and really holding on. I think the rub that's on there now is going to be plenty to hold the sauce on, even though it's thinner. But there's hot sauce and chili flakes in this one too, so I think it's gonna everything's going to have a little kick to it with the cayenne and the rub. I'm excited. Uh, the ribs have been on for about two hours, so the sauce is in the fridge, marinating by itself, getting all together. Uh, yeah, let's find out how. And this book is sort of interesting. I forgot to mention that it does say the science of barbecue, so there is some really interesting information in this book about everything from from the heat and the food preparation and, and the science behind it which i kind of love because i'm a dork i'm a nerd a bit of a science nerd when i was young i was doing experiments in the kitchen just throwing food coloring and all kinds of crap together so this is a great book if you're a bit of a dork and nerd for food we are in hour two of six so we're just gonna do another spritz again and then we'll do another rotate to keep the hot spots normalized really good. Check back in another hour when we're going to wrap. Okay, three hours in. We're really good here. Uh, I'm going to wrap one rack in butcher paper, one rack in foil, and one rack just open. No wrap at all. Uh, so, so I will check back in two hours. We have the rack of ribs unwrapped. So we have paper wrapped wrap them because I have two hours with extra space on here now because I stack all these up. I'm going to put on some serranos and some garlic. That's just good to have around the house. Two hours have passed. These were the ribs unwrapped. These were wrapped in butcher paper. These were wrapped in foil. You can tell a big difference. This one's getting much darker. This is sort of a medium, but there's a little more bone sticking out than these basically braising in a little bit of foil so a lot of the color the darkness came off and there's a lot more bone showing so i'm going to slap a little sauce on them and let them ride for the last hour that's cookie I'm trying to find scrap okay six hours later the ribs are all done we have the foil wrapped we have the butcher paper wrapped and the no wrapped and i could definitely tell on the foil wrap that they've pulled back from that bone a lot more than either one of these and I'm going to go ahead and assume that these are a lot more fall off the bone, too. I can see it's already trying to peel off. I didn't pull all the membrane off the back, so that might be part of it sticking there. But I guarantee that even though there's some pull there. Let me see if I can find a bone on this one. I can't even see the rib tips on here. Can't even see the rib tips on there yet. So, yeah. So these probably have a little more chew to it. And the color ended up being just about the same. This is a little darker, but overall, uh, so if you want more done, more fall off the bone, use foil. Uh, looks like somewhere in the middle. Use butcher paper, and then if you'd want some bite to your to your uh, to your pork, just don't wrap it. It's done. It's tender. So, yeah. Cheers. No way to go wrong. With some good pork ribs.